You're such an asshole. Hey everybody, the old captain here. I'm gonna be catching up. Uh, and just so you know, Monday prices double for the week because I will be taking off a week. And um, uh, so if you could postpone until not this upcoming Monday, but next Monday, uh, prices will go back down. But Doc says I need to go and take some time off and relax. Uh, and uh, so I'll be doing that. I'm, I'm trying to find a substitute for me, but I'm finding out um, being an asshole is a little bit more involved than I originally. It, to me, it's na second nature to be an asshole like me. But some people are nice. And it's hard. You just can't take a nice person to make them an asshole. Those bastards. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep this guy anonymous whether he wants it or not. Uh, dear asshole, I'm a sophomore in college considering majoring in cybersecurity or computer science at a well-ranked university. I just switched out of my former architecture major, realizing it was a miserable, flooded profession that requires seven years of slaving away and ass-kissing to basically get a shitty, low-paying job. Absolutely, if that. I'm a bit upset at wasting the last year on architecture, but so be it. I know you look down on this type of thing, but I'm receiving around 10 to $15 million worth of an inheritance. I do not look down on it. When you become a spoiled fucking leftist cunt, then I, then I look down on it. Or an arrogant, cocky prick, then I look down on it. But I, had, I have a friend uh, who inherited a lot of money, and uh, he is a very nice, humble guy. It is, it is personality, so it, it can happen. Just don't let this turn you into a prick, that's all. Uh, with no intention of getting married or having children. Likewise, seeing as money isn't a problem, I'm trying to decide what to do with my life to result in maximum net happiness. Should I finish my degree and travel the world working interesting low-paying jobs along the Adam Pickett route? Well, okay, right, let's stop right here. Why would you finish your degree and then go travel? You don't even know what you want to do. Why are you trying to figure a degree? This is the whole point of Reconnaissance Man, all right? Go buy Reconnaissance Man, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you one narrow but key uh, a component of it, is you should use traveling, because you don't know what to major in. When you're fresh out of high school, you don't know what the fuck to major in. You really don't. You don't know about your life. I find it hilarious and stupid. That's why I wrote the book that we're forcing kids at the age of 17 to determine what they're going to do for the rest of their fucking life. And then you go to college, and then you do, and you have your life, and then you suck, and then you die. So what I think you should do is should switch that. Travel and figure out who you are, what it is you want to do in life, and more importantly, where you want to live. That's kind of, and I, I read Reconnaissance, man, the, the philosophy is more involved and much more practical. It's just, oh my God, eat, pray, cats. Can I suck your penis over here, foreign man? It's, <laughs> it's a little bit more practical than that. But, the, uh, but yeah, I, I would do that first and then figure out what you want to do. Um, find a typical 9 to 5. No, because, again, you don't know what you want to do. What would that 9 to 5 job be? This is, and this has nothing to do with you inheriting 10 to 15 million. This is something every person, regardless of income, has to ask themselves. Otherwise, you're pissing away your time. Because take money away, all anybody has is time. So figure out first what you want to do. Uh, become a freelance computer programmer or something entirely different. I don't spend much money at all, and I'm not seeking an expensive lifestyle. Thanks for your time. Uh, <clears throat> we'll keep you anonymous. Um, I just want to... <sighs> blah, 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 blah. See if I need more information. All right. um, okay. Just, we had a couple more email exchange. All right, here's the deal. First thing, don't get cocky and realize you didn't earn that money, all right? Realize and always until the day you die, appreciate how fucking fortunate you are, all right? That, and I think you kind of got that because you're looking to work jobs, you're working to go into school even though you don't have, I mean, you could literally kick up your feet and say fuck it for the rest, especially since you're not gonna have kids or a wife. You could just, you know, you could, you could spend, dang, you could spend a quarter million a year. <laughs> I bet you, Based on your inheritance, it's going to pay dividends as well. Holy shit. Yeah, you could just, you could fuck all. Uh, but, yeah, don't get cocky because what's going to be more important, great, you got money. The most important thing in life is other humans. And if you're a rich asshole piece of shit like the typical fucking cocksuckers over in Edina or in Arden Hills, not Arden, yeah, Arden Hills. No, Linden Hills. It's Linden Hills and the um, Linwood area. 
in Kenwood area. Anything ending with wood in the Twin Cities. I hate the. You want to see arrogant, cocky fucks, go to the Uptown area. Go to the Walker Art Museum, where you see all the trust fund baby, baby boomers, like the baby boomers who inherited their parents' money. And they're artists over at the Walker. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway. I wouldn't kill them like that. I wouldn't kill. I'm kidding. I wouldn't, as far as you know. I wouldn't. Deadly serious. No, I wouldn't. Uh, so don't become those type of people because then you'll lose. You'll you'll have all the money in the world, but you won't have. Hey, I know this sounds so freaking gay. You won't have love. You won't have friends. You won't have socializing. You won't have intellectual stimulation. Stimulation. You won't have a wife. You are a good one anyway. You won't have good children, or they'll be good children, but they'll not like you. Uh, and you'll be poorer than fuck, all right? So you want to avoid that, so please keep remaining home. That's, that's your first job. Your second job is for you to maintain your wealth. Now, this opens up some interesting possibilities. Your brother is a CPA, and as long as you're on good terms with your brother, he could kind of do that for you, which would allow you to open up or go pursue a different uh, career. But if you have any interest in accounting or you know, you know, doing taxes or financial management, that's not a bad field. Uh, to get in, uh, not that you'd want to work hard, but just you would simply, you'd, you'd maintain the estate is what you would do. Uh, maybe go work for your brother, maybe, you know, so that, that's just an option. But regardless of whether you actually pursue a career in accounting or finance, get your CPA, something that would help you maintain and manage this wealth, um, uh, you, you still have to maintain it somehow. And that's your number one job. Because if that goes away, then you got to become like us schlebs and your life is going to get a lot shittier. All right? So if you don't have time to maintain your wealth and you trust your brother, that's another key thing. Put it under your... Have your brother help you out. I think you should actually educate yourself regardless about accounting, financial statement, taxes, things like that. You don't have to pursue it as a career, but that that is definitely something you want to do. You want to be able to know what your financial statements are telling you, know where your money is, and know if someone's trying to screw you over. And not to accuse your brother or something, but family members have. When, the, when amounts of this level of money are involved, oh, people get killed. Fucking read European history. Hey, I want the kingdom. Death to brother. Hey, I'm the king. Until, like, the nephew from the previously usurped throne comes back. Hey, I'm King Edward, and I've been in Bulgaria. I'll kill you. And then you have Game of Thrones. So you kind of want to avoid that. But regardless, that's your second primary job is to maintain the wealth. So that's going to require a little bit of education and finance and, and financial planning regardless. The third thing is going to be maintaining your sanity and, and living a good full life, finding and meeting people. And this is where you're going to run into the Buzz Aldrin syndrome. Um, you don't need to work for money, but you will need to work for agency purpose and reason and living in life. Because you just can't sit there like Jeremy Piven in uh, fucking smoking aces, all right? You're gonna need something to do. Now, this is where it's not the money. It's not the fact that you never have to work if you don't want to, because you're gonna wanna work. This is where the, the true blessing your parents gave you in passing on this inheritance comes in, is you get to pursue whatever you genuinely want that is intellectually stimulating to you. And if I were you, I mean, this is just examples. You don't have to do this. This is just examples where my mind is going. Dude, I would fucking Uber. Just drive around. Meet new people. I'd become, well, maybe not a ballroom dance instructor. I already was one. Uh, that'd be fun. Um, I would, if, today, if I had that level of money, what I would do is I'd become like Rick's Restorations or Count's Custom. I would, I would rebuild hot rods. I would go to like the Dunwoody Institute, I would go and apprentice under some guy and I would just rebuild hot rods every fucking day because I have the time and the money and, and I could make things of art, all right? <clears throat> that is where I would go. So you would still be supporting yourself. You would have one really freaking cool hobby, one really freaking cool job. Um, you would be humble, you'd be interesting, and it would definitely give you agency and purpose in life. But man, that would be so cool. I mean, that that's just but but whatever your version of rebuilding hot rods is or uh, rebuilding classical cars, you know that that's very appealing to me. But it may not be appealing to you. But you must have some kind of ideas like that where you would learn a skill or trade. You would I, I think a lot of it, especially for men, is to have a craft that you could make something. 
Uh, like I've gotten into lapidary where I cut semi-precious stones, polish them up, even make a little bit of jewelry. I know it sounds gay, but it's not. It's very masculine, especially when you're using a diamond cutting saw. Um, you know, uh, it, it's whatever. You could become a writer, then you become an alcoholic. Um, <clears throat> but if there's something where you could create something, I'd say especially with your hands, that'd be cool. Then you could, maybe the military is another thing. Like there's, there's where you're going to find a lot of agency and purpose. And so maybe you're not really creating something with your own hands. But you will definitely have camaraderie, friendship, and your ass kicked. You will have point and purpose and agency in life, whether you like it or not. So that's, uh, <clears throat> that's kind of where I would go. But the larger point is you're going to need something, and I strongly recommend, no, I don't, I command you, read, read the Buzz Aldrin syndrome. It's an article I wrote on Return of Kings uh, about what happens when everything is taken care of. You will slump into a depression, you'll borderline become suicidal because you have nothing else to do in life. So you are gonna to need to find something to do, so I would say have it something be a passion, like a real passion. None of I'm good with children, I have a passion for flowers, and I'm gonna deliver wedding bouquets because I just think I'm good with photography. No, 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 none of, that, none of that bullshit. You're gonna do like a real trade that you're good, that you will become good at and serves value and provides service to other people in, uh, in society. Um, so those are, those are the kind of the three things. You're not going to get cocky. You're going to maintain your wealth. And then you got to find something of genuine interest to you that has value to the rest of society that you could, you could make a living doing. I mean, you're going to have your money. You're not going to. But this isn't from money. It's going to keep you sane and give you purpose. And you kind of, what I'd say is you want to become the cool uncle. You know, you got your brother over there, Squaresville, fucking Poindexter doing his CPO, look, Point, And then, you know, these kids, they got there because they're going to be the inheritors of this money. And then your cool Uncle Joe, who comes in on his hot rod, he just re hey, kids, what's going on? Oh, Uncle Joe. And they run over. And then, like, you know, the kids would be spoiled anyway, though you wouldn't want to spoil those kids. Um, and then that, that is the fun shit, like, oh, your dad doesn't want to have you got that loud toy? Come on, Uncle Joe's taking you to the toys, all right? I mean, you get to be that guy. So uh, that, that's what I'd be doing. So anyway, those are your three jobs. But the final thing I'm going to part with, this is very important. For the love of God, don't tell anyone you got that money. Do not tell anyone. And don't even show it, man. I mean, you can hide it, especially from women. <clears throat> Most guys aren't going to be smart enough either. Uh, so, like, if you've ever looked at, like, a hot rod shop, that's a lot of fucking money. The tools and the equipment that go into a, a, a custom shop like that, that's, I, I mean, half a million, I'd imagine, and then you're doing all right. Women don't, they don't know the value of an air compressor. They don't know the value. Wow, you got a lift. Holy shit, you got a work bait on. They don't know that shit. So you could kind of spend your money wisely on, on good things that have a rate of return. But if you pull up in a Ferrari, oh, it's over for you, dude. You're, and now, now you don't know who's friend or foe. You don't know, you don't know who's a, a, a friend or a parasite. So <clears throat> I would, you know, have your nice toys. I mean, look, if you really, really want a Ferrari, put it in storage way the fuck far away. You go out with a girl, you don't pick her up in the Ferrari. You pick her up in the Chevy Malibu, all right? You pick her up in your Ford F-150. Uh, your house... You can have a nice little schwank bachelor pad. Don't have a fucking mansion. Don't, don't, don't be downtown. Don't, don't be like Bruce Wayne. Oh, well, hi, I have a secret. I'm Batman. <laughs> no, no, just, just kind of like, yeah, you got a nice place. It's all right. You said you're a minimalist or you're not, you don't need a lot of stuff. That's fine. That's good. Um, you know, certainly have your hobbies. Certainly have some nice things. But don't flaunt it, man. Do not flaunt it. And then, then when someone, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a mechanic. Boom. See, you got your cover. You're good to go. All right. So a lot of it is not just asset protection uh, and wealth maintenance, uh, but it's, it's, it's making it so that you can find quality people in your life too. And, and it's sad, but once you're rich, it's, I mean, come on, look at fucking Paris Hilton or the Kardashians. Do you think they have any real friends that they could trust? You think anyone loves them? Holy fuck. I mean, I'm in better shape than them, truthfully. Anyway, that's all I got. Hope that helped out. Hope we all learned something. Best of luck to you. Toodles.